Uh, engine just cut out. We're just floating. We've lost oil pressure. Everything's turned off. Just as we've entered the shipping channel. If anyone's coming this way, they'll be able to see us. So I'm not sure what to do. So it's first thing in the morning. It's time to leave today. We've got a big day ahead of us, 140 miles. So just gonna grab some coffee, clean a bit of the uh, deck up, pay the bill and go. Well, we've done it. We're out of the marina and it's a uh, lovely fresh day. Floating mosque behind me. Not much wind to talk about at the moment. It's coming from the south and will continue to come from the south a little bit, but it's not particularly strong. Very relaxed. We're out of the marina and this is what I've been looking forward to since I arrived back in Malaysia. I always, always get a bit tense in marinas, but I love getting out even though we're motoring there's no wind just being out so it's just great just love it I'm happy we put the uh, mizzen and the staysail out just to help us motor sail just to perhaps get a little bit more speed but also just to stabilize the boat a bit and we're getting close to the islands and just over your shoulder is a very close fishing boat that if it was night time I would be cacking myself but because it's the day and we can see what he's doing. He's put his nets out and he's put the float, uh, the, uh, there's some kind of thing that goes in the water just to drag the net down and it slowed him right down. So we know that that's what's happening. But at night, I wouldn't have any idea what was going on. have many hundreds of fishing boats uh, leaving the land and they're all coming across it uh, diagonally to us so they're all coming from the southeast and heading northwest out to sea we've had to avoid a couple of them because they've all got their nets out they're probably traveling at the same speed as us actually no more than five knots we're going against the tide got a bit of wind on the nose so we're not going particularly fast they're not going particularly fast we're just playing it safe and moving around but uh, as I say, there's many, you get them in batches of five or six fleets of six boats. They all come in groups and they're sort of nipping in between them. Night time's approaching, what's happening? Um, well look, it's completely flat. Ideally, we wanted to have some wind pushing us so we could sail. We didn't get that. Instead, we've been motoring, a little bit of motor sailing. Uh, but we've got no big wind against us, no nasty waves. So, you know, you've got to look on the positive side. On the slightly annoying side is that these fishermen are coming in sort of small fleets across us the whole time so we just have to be on our toes uh, we've been using the bins to see if they've got nets out the back and pretty much all of them have so when it becomes night I think we're gonna to have to assume that there are always going to be nets behind them we're using the radar to tra check their tracks but we do have to keep doing a little bit of dodging As you can see we've lost almost all light now and we're not too far from the beginning of the shipping lane so this is the Malacca Strait proper and it's very strange because you can see just over there towards the southwest uh, all the ships that have been coming up they've sort of peeling away as they go off in their different directions and all I can see through the binoculars are just random shapes very difficult even to see the lights although of course they should have everyone's got their lights on now uh, so it's going to be interesting, the world's busiest shipping route apparently, so let's see what happens. Our plan is to go down 
the uh, inside of the shipping lane coming up this way. So we're actually going the opposite way, but we're going to stick right to the edge. Uh, this is the recommended thing to do because of the multitude of local fishing boats and fishing nets. So this is how uh, yachts and small boats avoid that and uh, obviously keeping an eye on the bigger boats. So no sooner as the sun has gone down, we've got our first complication. We have a line of flashing red lights which appear to, they almost appear to be connected. They run for some miles down our port side and we can't work out what it is. Could be um, a fishing, one single fishing net that runs all the way down one of the surface nets could be uh, just lob uh, fishing pots, fishing traps, but we're in 65 meters of water, so that's unlikely. Um, could be uh, a boat that's got a net out the back and it's the light indicator in the back of the net, we're not sure. We haven't yet hit the shipping lane. We can see one of the first uh, flashing beacon lights, which is where we're roughly going to aim for, um, but we haven't got there yet. And so in between here and the shipping lane is still a lot of activity with local fishing boats and that's what we've got to keep an eye out for. And the added complication is that we've also got lightning over there and lightning over there and we did have some big lightning in front but at least that stopped. It's cloudy, the, we're on a waning crescent moon so it means we're not going to see the moon uh, until about one o'clock this morning. So we're approaching the shipping channel and it really is like a slow motion uh, motorway. You see this traffic moving in both directions all on our starboard side. We're coming down the inside. Uh, earlier this afternoon we uh, motored up to 2000 RPM. We pushed the engine up to 2000 RPM uh, just to get out of the way of a fishing boat. And back then we had the tide against us and we managed to get six knots. Now we have the tide with us. We are doing up to seven and a half knots now, just motoring. Uh, so we're making good progress. It's just <laughs> super dark and we're basically navigating by uh, uh, radar now. So occasionally looking at the chart but really just using the radar and this is popping down below to check the AIS because unfortunately we can't repeat the AIS data on the chart plotter in the cockpit which is a mild annoyance but never mind. At least we have that data there and of course we can be seen on the IIS as well. It's keeping us on our toes. I think we're both going to be up pretty much most of the night taking little snatches of sleep when we can. But uh, yeah, we just need to just be careful. Those flashing red lights, which I'm pretty certain were surface nets, uh, we've now passed. So we've got five fathom bank it's called and lots of um, sand waves, lots of sand waves. The, terrain here, or the, rather the seabed, is, is very much like this. The strong currents changing the shape of the seabed. So it's very undulating and over on our starboard side towards land, that's where all the local fishing guys hang out and we were told not to go down there at night because you get these uh, floating uh, nets like we described. So that is why we are going down the wrong way, down the shipping channel, right on the edge. Can you tell me what's going on? Our uh, engine just cut out. We, uh, by the looks of things, we've lost oil pressure. Just as we've entered the shipping channel, there's no wind, so we can't get the sails up. So I'm just going to check the oil, but I've had a look and... Not leaking? Doesn't look like it. A bit of oil here, but seems to be quite a bit down here, though. Let's see how it goes. I think I've already got on deck. Yep. So this is just an emergency supply of oil in a big drum, which I should have decanted before we left. The problem is trying to locate where that's uh, it's actually leaking from. We've been on engine power for uh, 12 hours now. Yeah, and I increased the revs as well, but it shouldn't make any difference. So it's lasted for 12 hours. I wonder if it was leaking the whole time. It's a very small leak. Yeah, I mean, that's possible. It is possible. This engine takes about seven litres of 
pile, so it's quite a lot. So up here on deck, we've got the deck floodlight on so that hopefully if anyone's coming this way, they'll be able to see us. Everything's turned off. So lucky because there's no weather and we're just floating. We're doing 0.7 knots and we're going in the right direction. So I'm just keeping an eye out here to make sure everything's okay. Luckily, we're also only in 25 meters. So if needs be, we could anchor see what happens so I just checked the uh, oil level and actually we haven't actually lost any oil but we've lost pressure so I'm not sure what to do the only thing in our favor is that we've got a bit of current and there's a tiny 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 bit of wind so I'm just trying to edge us over to these uh, these sand it's not a sandbank it's just a shallow patch just outside of the shipping channel and um, we're going to drop the hook and at least then we can just you know take it one bit at a time yes yeah, so we're going to get to safety we'll put the anchor down then we can just take a moment and think it through exactly yes because uh yeah being stuck in the shipping lane isn't isn't good is it so yeah we're moving very slowly though i might have to put the uh the yankee out just to pick up what wind there is there's only <laughs> There's four knots of wind, so we just need to try and get over there. If push comes to shove, we might have to put the dinghy in the water just to push us over there. But uh, if we just get into that 20, 15 metre area, then we'll be all right. Okay, the situation is this. We're too far out to have any kind of signal to ring anyone for help. We have read through... Calder, the Bible, and we have the beta manual. So we, we, there's a number of things we know we can do. We can't do anything until the engine cools down. So while it cools down, we're sailing very, very slowly. I was counting 1.7 to 1.9 knots um, towards land so that at least we can get a signal to ring for help if we need it. And also to be a little bit shallower so that if we put the anchor down and have to bring it up by hand, it's not going to be quite so difficult. So we're just very gently, gently getting somewhere. No warning lights came on, no alarms, nothing. The engine just shut down. So it's like it lost pressure really quickly. And uh, there seems to be some oil sprayed around at the back end of the engine somewhere and I can't work out where it's come from so I think that's the first thing to try and work out if there is an oil pressure drop due to a split hose or something um, but uh, at the moment as Liz says we're moving but really it's not the wind that's pushing us it's the current so it will be interesting to see if we continue to have no wind what that current does and where it takes us so we're trying to sail as due east as possible um, yeah. I hope it is the hoses because that's something we can fix fairly easily isn't it? no it's, it's not, not. No. I thought we had spare no, hoses no they're all high pressure hoses okay. 